All right, hello there and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. And in this one, we're gonna be covering how to do pie charts. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go up and grab my ellipse tool right here, select it. And then I'm going to make sure that there's no fill. And for the stroke, I'm gonna give it a white stroke and make sure that you do not have Bezier up here selected. And then I'm gonna click and drag out. You can hold shift like this to make it a perfect circle, or you can press control and shift and it stretches it out from where you selected, but it also gives you a perfect circle, something like this. And the anchor point jumps to the middle. If yours didn't do that, you can go up to edit, preferences, general, and then make sure that you have center anchor point and new shape layers. Okay, good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click right here, just drag it over and I'm gonna make this stroke a little bit smaller. So we'll do maybe 15 and I'll zoom in a little bit. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my ellipse and I'm going to call this ring outer like that. And then if I go down right here, my lips, and if you don't like the size of this, you can go down to your lips path right here and you can bump this up to however you want it to be. I'm gonna press Control Z though to undo that or Command Z if you're on a Mac. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this like this and we're gonna call this ring enter like that. And we're gonna make this guy a little bit smaller. So we're gonna open him up and make him a little bit smaller. Say something around here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this one more time. And I'm going to call this pi right here. And then this time I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna bump up his stroke. So, so we'll do something like this right here. Then we'll go down to our ellipse, ellipse path bump up the size right about here. And we're actually gonna have to make our first ring a little bit larger, so bump up this size right here. And then this top one, we can make this a little bit bigger so that we have something like this. And for this color, I'm gonna change the stroke color to let's do this reddish color right here. Awesome. So here we have the foundation. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this pie. So control D one more time. And this bottom one, we are going to call our pie background like this. And then pie two, we can just call it pie. Good. And I will give this pie two a different color. So we will give it a color of, let's do this bluish color right here like this and we are going to turn him off for now all right so now what we can do is we can animate all this so we could close all this up by pressing Control a and then press l to close it and then select the bottom three layers press s and then i'm going to press Control alt and home so that my anchor point is in the middle and then i'm going to go 20 frames forward so press shift and then page down twice. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a keyframe right here, go back to the beginning, set it to zero. You can easy ease these if you want like that. And then we are going to animate this pie right here. So I'm gonna turn him back on and then I'm going to open them up and I'm going to add a trim paths. So trim paths right here. And then in the beginning, we'll put it to say zero. And then we'll go over here and we will set it to, let's do 75. So we have this. And then we'll easy ease these. So select them all and press F9. And we can offset this guy. So once our animation comes in fully down here, we can bring this guy over 
like that. And then we can add some text to this if we want. So text tool. And I'll use a percentage. So I'll press zero, zero like that. Make it a little bit bigger like that. Good. Select it, put the anchor point in the middle. So control alt and home, drag it over. Let's make them a little bit bigger actually. Place them in the middle, center of the anchor point. And then I'm going to add one more text. So control D down here. And then we will call this guy percentage. So percentage. And then we're going to drag him down. And we will give him the percentage sign like this. And we will make him a lot smaller. Select. Put him right there and center the anchor point. Then for our zeros, we are going to tie them to our pi. So we're going to open up the source text. And then we will pick whip to the end of our trim paths. And if I play it back, we have this right now. All right. Now to get rid of this crazy number, we have to open up our source text. So select this, double click. And then in the beginning of this, you're going to type math, capital M, dot round. And then put parentheses right here. Delete the second one and then put it on the end. And it should be a round number now. Just like that. Good. All right. Then we're going to grab our text and we are going to put it right here when the pie begins to load. Just like that. So if I select them all and press L and then I select them all again and press U, we see our keyframes. If I play it back, we have something like this. And if you want to slow this graph down, you can just like that. Awesome. All right, now you can also create dashes for these. So it's pretty simple. You just go to your pie right here, click down. And then if I go to my ellipse, stroke, dashes, and I add this plus, and I add it twice like this, notice that I can now add dashes and gaps. And notice if I adjust the gaps, I get something like this. You have to be careful with the end though, so that it looks even. So if I play this back now, we have something like that. You can also adjust the gap. So that gives you a different look. If you want something like this, you can. That gives you a different look right there. Once again, you'll just have to be careful with the dash so that it looks so that it looks full right there. And then if you want to say adjust the offset, you can do that. So I could say put a keyframe right here at zero. And then over here, I go and I set this to say 400. And I play it back now. Notice that it gives you this cool kind of animation. And we'll actually set this trim paths to let's do 100 just to better see it. So double click on the keyframe, set the value to 100. Now I have to adjust my dash. Okay. Uh -oh. I have to adjust my number as well. Okay. All right, so we can also give it a different kind of background if we want, if we don't want the red, we can give it a moving background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this guy off and then I'm going to duplicate this pie. So control D and I'll open him up. So you select them both and press U and we will give this bottom pie right here a different color. So we'll give it a color of let's do this yellow color. And then we're going to offset it. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these guys right here 
and then move them over just a little bit, just like that. And if I play it through, we have this. Awesome. And you can play with your offsets as well if you want. You can say delete this one. I'll press Control Z to undo that. Now one thing to remember when dealing with your offsets though is that you need to make sure that they line up at the ends. So if I was to say bump this up to something like this and I go to the end, notice how it's off right here. So you have to be careful with your offsets. So I'll press Control Z. Now notice that it's spot on right on top of the other. Good. We can also say move this text if we want. So right here, we can bring it down here and to scale it up. It's best to use a null actually, because if I press S and try to scale up from here, notice it just doesn't work. So press control Z, go ahead and create a null, right click new null object. And then you're going to parent these two to the null. And then on the null, you can scale it up or down. And notice that now it is scaling correctly. And if you want to move it or scale it more, you can. And place the text wherever you want it to be. All right, guys. So now we're going to look at how to create a dashed pie. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first simply delete some of this stuff. So the pie background, I'm going to delete going to get rid of this pie right here and I'll keep the pie too and then the inner ring I will delete as well like that and then this stuff over here I'm going to move over so I'm going to grab the null and I'll just set it down here for now now to create a dash pie it's pretty simple uh, you just simply go over to your pie two, contents ellipse then you're going to go down to your stroke Then you're going to open up your dashes right here. And then for your dashes, you're going to set this to 9.9 .9 or 10 like that. And if I play it back now, we have something like that. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see better. All right, good. I'm going to get rid of the offsets. So I'm going to just deselect that and make this zero play it back. Now we have this. And I'm going to set this dash to actually 10 like that. And if I play it back now, we have this. All right, good. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and create a little needle for this. So I'm going to close all this up by pressing control a and then L then I'm going to click off so that I don't have any layer selected. And up here I have the polygon tool right here. And if you don't see it, just click on this and we have it right here and it has a red fill and I'm just going to click and drag something like that. Press shift so that it's straight. Put your anchor point in the middle by pressing control alt and home or command alt and home. If you're on a Mac, then I'm going to go down over here and I'm going to call this needle. So, and then under the contents in the poly star, poly star path, I'm going to set the points to three actually like this and we're going to make it a little bit smaller so press s bring it down right here and press v for the selection tool and bring it down to the middle right here then i'm going to zoom in and i'm going to open up my title and action safe so that i can see the center right here and i'm actually going to bring my anchor point right here down to the bottom of my shape. So press Y and it snaps. Make sure you have snapping selected. And with that there, I'm going to bring my shape up right here. And I'm going to bring, and I'm going to bring him over a little bit so that it's centered just like that. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Then I'm going to select my needle right here. I'm going to unbind it. 
And then I'm going to squish it together like this and then just pull it up a little bit so that I have something like this. Now I need to make sure everything is perfectly centered. I can tell it's a little off, so I'm gonna zoom in here. And for this ring outer, I'm gonna go over here and select align horizontally. Pi two, do the same. And then for the needle, it should be close, but I'll do it anyway, like this. Good. Now for this needle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the rotation right here. And I'm going to create an expression because we want this needle to follow our trim paths of our Pi 2. So press Alt and click on the stopwatch. And then you're going to open up your Pi. So click on the Pi and press U to see your keyframes. And then you're going to grab this pick whip down here and tie it to the end. And then in here we have to add something. So we're going to press times 3.6. Just like that and if i play it back now we see that it follows perfect now we don't want the needle to be just like this in the beginning so we can say have it right over here and just drag it over where it just comes in or you could do something simple like you could play with the opacity so press t on the needle put a keyframe here and then right here Bring it down to zero. Easy ease these. And you have something simple, simple animation. And if you wanted to, you could add another outer ring to this. So you could say, duplicate this, make it smaller, and then give it some dashes if you want. So open this up, content, ellipse, Just like that, and then maybe the offset you could you, know, you could adjust the stroke to say eight, make it skinnier. And then under the transform here, now if we play this back, we see that it's doing this. It's not what we want. So this keyframe is at 57. We're gonna go over here to this keyframe, double click set it to 57 and delete this guy right here and if i play it back now we have this all right now i actually want to work with what i had in the beginning so i'm going to press ctrl z a few times to remove this inner ring so so if i play it back we have this now our percentage needs to follow our trim path. So what we're gonna do is we are going to open up the number right here. And we're gonna do what we did last time. So we're gonna click on the stopwatch, drag it down to the pi right here. If I play it back, we have this. Go ahead and add the expression. So drop this down. And say math dot round parentheses delete this guy parentheses click off so that's how you can create a dashed pie chart so i hope that you've learned something in this video about pie charts and that you will give it a try until next time